Hi, and welcome to Road to the Derby, Horse Racing Nation's short format show, taking a look at the Derby prep races for the 2022 season. I'm Andrew Capone from Who's Got the Action, and my partner Caleb Knight from Taking a Stand. So we'll be looking at the Lecomte Stapes at Fairgrounds, 1 and 1 16th on a mile on the longest stretch in racing. Caleb, who'd you like here? Hey, Andrew. It's exciting. We're into the uh, time of the year where I really start to get excited for the Kentucky Derby Trail. So kicking off the Lacombe, I ended up on a horse that probably isn't the most uh, creative selection here. He's the second choice in the morning line, the number five horse at the center. I really think this horse has the right run style for fairgrounds. As you mentioned, this is the longest stretch in the country, but typically closers are up against it, going two turns at the fairgrounds, or really any configuration on the fairgrounds main track. So I think Epicenter has the right kind of run style here. He was ultra impressive last out in the Gunrunner Stakes, the local prep for the Lecomte, where he sat just off the pace by Surfer Dude and then really just took over in the stretch and drew off like a horse that's going to relish every step of ground he can get. So I thought that was an incredibly impressive race here. Uh, he gets reunited with Joel Rosario from two back, so he already has some familiarity with the horse. Uh, you get Steve Asmussen at the fairgrounds and uh, – in what is it late January and that's a, a pretty good combination here with the Derby prep horse and I really think Epicenter is the horse to beat in this race even more so than the morning line favorite uh, Papa Cap. What did you see here Andrew? I, I agree with you on Epicenter. I think the horse should be much the best. Uh, when we look at the recency bias coming from fairgrounds 50% of horses on or within one length of the lead at first call uh, and the inside post, even though we're only looking at the average of six horse fields, 75% are coming through one through three. Uh, if we go a little further back and we look at the last 40 races, we're still seeing about 62.5% on or within one length of the lead at first call. So it's definitely on the dirt routes of fairgrounds. It's who can get out there, uh, who can get out in front and just keep running. Uh, there is a lot of pace in this race. It's definitely looking like there, there is a possibility for a meltdown. I don't see it. Um, I agree with you 100% on Epicenter, uh, but I will say I'm going to play looking at a long shot here as well. The number one horse, Surfer Dude. Uh, Surfer Dude runs with the bias perfectly. Horse should be out front. Uh, it's going to be on the inside coming from the one post. Uh, my one fear here is, is definitely the distance. Can the horse get one and one sixteenth? Um, horse might be better at a mile. Maybe this is a little too long for the horse, but uh, Surfer Dude's been training very well uh last work was with big scully uh, third place finisher in the louisiana futurity uh, so definitely a horse here that's been working with better uh, and there's an opportunity for this horse i think if it gets get out there on the lead has an opportunity to walk him around if not uh, has raced epicenter before there, there there's an opportunity for epicenter to pass the horse and it could run underneath i'm going to be using this horse multiple times in my exactas i think you're going to get a very good price here somewhere in the 18 to 20 to 1 range uh, and an opportunity to add value to that uh, to a ticket with the number five epicenter who did you like as your long shot yeah, I definitely agree with you about Surfer Dude. I think he's kind of sneaky in here. And we all know Dallas Stewart is known to sneak those bombs into big races. So I definitely wouldn't overlook him at all in this spot. My long shot is kind of going the other direction as I'm going to try to buck some of the recent bias trends here. Just looking at this race, as you mentioned earlier, it does feel like there's a lot of pace in here. There's probably three or four horses that want to be on or just off the lead. So there is a world out there where I think this pace gets pretty hot and contentious. And if it does, I think the most likely horse to benefit from that is the number eight, Call Me Midnight. It took this horse a long time to break his maiden, about five or six starts. But he really just seems like a horse that's really still growing and maturing and sort of growing into his own stride a little bit. He finally did put it all together, two back at Churchill, beating a pretty decent maiden field. Uh, and then came back next out and was probably just thrown in a little bit over his head trying to tackle grade two company in the Kentucky Jockey Club at Churchill. Uh, first time against winners is never easy. And he was extremely wide that day while chasing a pretty slow pace. So I'm not going to hold that start against him. You smile happy. He came back to uh, after winning that race. And he's now one of your favorites for the Kentucky Derby and the futures pools. So I'm not going to really be too embarrassed by his effort there at all. I think that he's going to be a little more mature out of that effort. And he, he will need a little bit of help up front to set up some of his leg kick. But I do think the pace is there to set him up and he does get reunited with James Graham who was on board for the lone win. So I think Call Me Midnight is a horse that may be a little more likely to run underneath than to outright win, but I think he's a good horse to include on your vertical tickets at the very least. 
So Epicenter on top, uh, and you just gave us your long shot. Is there any horse that you think we should take a second look at here as, as maybe some another one that has interest? Yeah, I think there's probably one other horse I would look at. So, so I'm not a believer in Papa Cap. That's not a horse that I'm going to reuse really on any of my tickets here. Uh, Cyberknife's another one that I think is going to take a beating at the windows. It doesn't do much for me. So I'm actually going to give a second glance to the number seven, Blue Kentucky. This is a horse that has that forwardly placed running style that you want to have at the fairgrounds, but he doesn't need the lead. He showed that he can pass horses in each of his last two starts. And the big question is the distance here. He tried a mile three starts ago and didn't run particularly well, but I'm not really going to say he can't get the distance based off of one race. He was really wide across a four and five way speed duel that day. So I think he moved a little bit too early into a hot pace and kind of paid the price. I think he'll be a little bit better off today if he can, use some of those rating tactics that he showed in each of his last two starts. And his pedigree says he should be okay to go this far and maybe even actually be better go this far compared to some of those six furlong sprints he's been running in. So Blue Kentucky is a horse that I think could work out a sneaky trip and might get overlooked. Uh, don't like him quite as much as my other selections, but he's maybe the only other price horse I would give a glance to. Well, Caleb, I'm a huge fan of your weekly article, Taking a Stand, where you go against one of the favorites. So if you're going against Papa Cap here, there's a good opportunity, chance that I should be going against Papa Cap. I've seen your record on, on your writing. So there's, there's something to be said for fading this favorite here. One and one sixteenth of the mile, race number 14 at the fairgrounds this weekend. Hopefully the trees don't get in the way too much so we can get a good view of the horses. And um, we'll be back next week with another episode of Road to the Derby. We'll be looking at the next upcoming Derby prep races.